And I'd like to welcome you to another conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. And today, of course, as always, we are blessed to have Her Holiness, the Santara of Santaranus, the Celtic Queen of Questionable Comforts, the Queen of Kundalini in Ireland, Her Holiness, Amelia Santara. Hello. Just throw money. Just throw money. Just throw money. Can't hear you, Amelia. Uh oh. Doesn't like. You know, looks like we have more, more of our lovely blog talk. Uh, uh, shall we say technical uh, challenges? So, without further ado, I will continue with the program. Um, I'm going to try to get on the uh, the chat group here, simply because. Uh, I need to know if this show is actually being heard. Uh, I know that uh, that Amelia isn't being heard just quite yet, at least not from my angle. Uh, maybe she is being heard uh, from her own angle, or at least maybe maybe I'm the one that's not going through. You never know. It's always a uh, a surprise, and so we'll we'll just see how this is going today as. As uh, as in last time, we have the lovely Julia, who is here, and and uh, she is going to be giving us some of her insights about what she has experienced while visiting the uh, the ashram here. So, coming into the chat room, it looks like I have Her Holiness Celestial Rubies, Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez, Fasci, and guest seventeen forty nine. Uh, Fast G, Elizabeth, Julie, could you let me know if you're hearing me? Are you hearing Chrism? Is it coming through? Ah, okay. Ah, ah. Oh, I see. Wow. Santara, I've never seen you down there before. It's, it's, it seems just kind of like indecent. But, but okay. All right, then. Fast G, can't hear a thing. Uh, refresh. Refresh anybody that's not hearing it. Refresh. 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 Um, uh, let's see. Julie. Julie. Yep. Yep. There we go. There we go. There we go. Uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Dalton Gonzalez. Can you hear as well? And anybody that is listening outside of the uh, outside of, of the chat room. You may want to refresh if you can hear it all. I mean, you know, there's that. Uh, okay, okay. And there's Rosemary. Uh, Rosemary, let's see. Oh, I see. Look at this. Wow. Well, hmm. Rosemary, can you hear? I can hear very well, like very well, like really I, I've well. I've heard that about you. Good. That's good. I'm going to put you in the blue, and I'm going to ask Eileen. It's always a it's always a, a challenge here. Hello, Eileen. Can you hear the show? Okay. Yes, Chris. And it's wonderful. The sound is wonderful. Oh, but I you, could not hear Santara. The, the sound of your voice is also wonderful, my dear. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for that feedback. Going into the blue here. And let's see, uh, Fast G, okay, I'm here now, okay, all right, all righty then. Uh, all right, so we're going to go ahead and, and begin. Now, as, as, as you know from the last week's show, uh, Julia Reinert is here, or Renier, or she has an interesting last name. Uh, she is here visiting the ashram from uh, the High Holy Lands of the North, uh, Minnesota, Minnesota. She's from the Twin Cities area or a place called Chaska, which kind of sounds like Shasta, but just not. Uh, so, so she has come down here. She's been spending a little less than a month 
here with with me uh, as a student in the ashram. We've been going to very, many, many different places, as you know. Now, Julia uh, has had uh, very, very, very strong experiences and interactions with entities. And these entities, uh, the, the view of these entities are is really being controlled by the kundalini itself and this is something that that uh, i think is is important to note that uh, that she is indeed not so much in control of this as much as the kundalini itself is in control of this and this is something that that i really want to elaborate on because uh, people get to do what the kundalini allows them to do and even though it allows a, a you know a huge level of opportunity to do different things it's not always going to be at the beck and call of the person who's opening to the kundalini matter of fact it will never be at the beck and call in the way that that phrase might be under, understood in western terminology or certainly north you know uh, North America uh, terminologies. It is there. It is there for you. And when it opens some of these gifts for you, they can be there temporarily or they can be there on a, on a more permanent level. Uh, and so this is important for people to consider. The other aspect of it is sometimes it might just take these skills away from you. Some, just the same way that a person isn't going through Kriyas for the rest of their life, uh, you know, typical typical Kundalini Kriyas will last anywhere from, you know, six weeks to six months, but then they start to diminish. They start to go away. Okay. It doesn't mean the Kundalini is mad at the person. It doesn't mean that the person has done anything wrong. It just means that the person has come into a level of acclimation of the, the, uh, the Kriyas that allows for the body to come up to the level of frequency interaction with the kundalini and therefore the body doesn't feel the uh the the kriya response anymore now i'm going to see if her holiness santara is uh, able to come online here santara hello oh boy hi Clinton. oh finally got you off the bathroom huh oh yay what was that about <laughs> Well, that that, just... Somebody needs to stop eating cheese. That's all I can say. <laughs> so weird to actually hear everybody but not to be heard. Actually, maybe not so weird. <laughs> welcome, welcome to my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I missed all the beginning there now of, of what the topic is going to be for today and all of that, but I'll catch up again. Um I begin, do, Chris, please, if I may. Please do, please, please do your normal thing. I'm gonna. I need I to go get some speakers. It's not. It's not coming through very loud here. Okay. Okay. You're coming through brilliantly, actually. Okay. Well, I will begin by giving everybody the address that they can go to if you want to make a donation to Kundalini Awakening Systems. And the best place to do this and the easiest way to do this is to go to the Blogspot website. And the address for that is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And up on the right-hand corner, you will see the Donate button. And people ask if the Donate button, if that's the best place to go, and it is. The Donate button on the Yahoo group is not functioning at the moment, so this is the best place to go. Um, if you wish to donate in a different way, you can contact me on kundalinimatters at gmail.com, and I can give you um, details on a bank, a bank transfer. But... If you use www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com, um, you'll find it very, very um, easy to use. And as we always say, there's no obligation on anybody to make a donation. It's not expected, yet because donations are important and they are how this service that Quizm gives um, to people with a Kundalini awakening process happening, um, 
helps that to be able to be continued. So please, if you're in a position to donate, that is wonderful. And if you're not, that is also wonderful. No worries. Thank you all very much. And um, Quizum, that's it. I have some questions gathered as always. So at any time, you can ask me about those. Uh, there's also there is- someone waiting on the telephone there with a 202 uh, or a 337 prefix. See if they have a question, would you please? Yes, Quizum, I'll do that now. Thank you, my dear. Yes, so we have been blessed with Julia Renier's uh, presence here. And, and, and as you might recall, during the last episode of Kundalini Awakening Systems Conversations, uh, Julia had experienced a, a, an entity attack in Yuma, Arizona, right after visiting a Yogananda too. Two Yogananda centers, which really weren't related to that so much. That was more just a, a way of opening her to more more of her kundalini. And as the and as an into, individual opens to more of their kundalini, well, as the kundalini opens more within them, they are also opened more to having discarnate interactions. Which at about five in the morning, maybe four thirty, four forty-five in the morning, Julia awoken with a scream that was so loud and so sharp that it woke me up in the next room. How is a guy to get sleep with something like that going on? I don't know. But so she, you know, she described very well last week how that occurred and then how we went to the black, to the painted rock and she saw the entities perched up on the rocks there. So her third eye is now beginning to open, now beginning to open. And then she travels to, Yos- to, not Yosemite, but to Sedona. And there, an army of entities are waiting to devour her very soul. And I'm just being dramatic here. That's not what really occurs. And as they're waiting to pounce on the poor, unsuspecting Minnesotan female as she walks around the parking lot, she is taken over with an unreasoning fear an unreasoning malevolent activity that has has yet to expose its true intentions upon her. Right? Right. That's that's exactly how it was. (laughs) 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 Ah, Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, good, good, good. Very good. Uh, As for Santara, we we will get right to her question in a second here. And Julia was, of course, given certain instructions that allowed her to go into devotion. And through the devotion, uh, she was given ecstasy, samadhi. She was given the the highest graces that the kundalini gives to the person. And she was able to go through that level of entity interaction for her. And so, of course, her mean, vicious, and cruel teacher thought, oh, my gosh. Foiled my plans again. Well, let's see here. My little pretty, as they say in Wizard of Oz. (laughs) What else can we do? And I am going to cover that what else as soon as we answer this question here by this lovely person. And here we are. Hello, 337-202-9388. How the heck are you? I am wonderful. How are you? I'm doing okay. Can you speak into that microphone a little better? Yes, I'm doing all, I'm doing okay. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And and what's been happening with you, my dear? Well, I did experience a, a kind of um experience. Um well, but it was doing uh, a sexual encounter um that I had with, with a friend of mine. Um <laughs> And, um, it's okay. Yeah, it was an experience that I had with a friend, of, a friend of mine, and um, and I just didn't understand why did I experience that with that person, and I don't even know what this is about. But even then, I mean, we we've, we've always had a a strong connection. So I would love to know what that's all about. With me and well, let person. me tell you. So you. What, what, just to, to reiterate a little bit, during a sexual encounter with a friend, you had yeah. 
what would be <laughs> yeah. you had what yeah. would be kundalini uh like a kundalini activation right yes yes and you're asking me why that would have occurred yes it's time it's time for you you know lots of this is timing based uh it would i would have i will suggest it was no accident that you had that encounter with with, with, with you know, thank goodness, a friend of yours, and it's no accident yeah. that they may not have had that as well. Okay. Um, he experienced that too. Okay. <laughs> well, is he there? Yeah, but um. Is he listening? Is he is he responding to it no, the way you? No, he's not. He's well. That's the thing. It's like um. Both of our gifts have definitely increased. Um, things like that and stuff. Um, our awareness has definitely increased. Okay, all right. Um, we've what always else had a connection, but uh, okay. it's 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 interesting. But I don't, um, I don't understand why him. I mean, because that's never happened with me before. Why not him? Ah. Sure. I mean, seriously. Kundalini is an aspect of the divine nature of a human being. And if it decided that this man was the man to trigger the, its awakening within you, then why not him? That's true. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, this... This can have the activity of increasing the level of of the relationship. Uh, this can have the activity of uh, certainly of increasing awareness, and it can also trigger a great search for answers and for understandings to be given within this this amazing experience that that we call Kundalini awakening. And so, I see you here doing this, and, and my question, is he on a similar search? Is, it, is this something that's dominating his yeah. awareness as well? Yes? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is wonderful. This is wonderful, then. Both of you have, a, have, a, have, a, have an awakening that happens with each other. This is a most beautiful, beautiful way to have that occur. And uh, so, I, I, first of all, I want to congratulate you both for that. Um, let's see, uh, uh, Santara, I'm going to bring Santara on here just for a second. Yes. Yes, Christian. I want you to hover over the blue. Hover over the blue. And I'm going to put you in the blue. Okay, so yeah, as, as you, as you and him have experienced this type of a scenario, it's really the most important thing right now is to accept it and to begin to surrender your life into this scenario. Begin, both of you can, can begin to be, basically you're surrendering your life to the divine. However you recognize the divine to be, God's hand is on your shoulder, both of your shoulders. You were brought together probably through karma, uh, because you're both at a, at a at a stage, perhaps where where the two of you can begin to to live a life based upon grace, based upon trust, based upon happiness, based upon balance and forgiveness and tolerance and patience and love. Can you do that with with each other? Is that happening? Well, um, yes, I definitely trust him. <laughs> um, so this is a this is kind of a karmic. Uh, relationship kind of a thing. Yeah, this, yeah, this it doesn't happen. You, you're not you're not getting accidentals here now. Oh wow! And so I will encourage you to go to Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com. It's a free website. You don't have to pay any money. And go to the uh, to the left hand menu. The fifth option down on the left side is the safeties. And I'm going to encourage both of you to begin to practice daily. These safeties, and this this includes physical exercises, emotional exercises, spiritual exercises, mental exercises, and psychological ex- exercises. It doesn't take a long time. It sounds like it might, but it doesn't. 
doesn't take a long time at all. And uh, really begin to initiate these into your life because they feed your kundalini awareness. They feed the levels of exploration and the, the levels of personal, uh, personal grace that is being developed within the both of you at this time. So this is, this is wonderful. You know, a lot of times it happens where the, the partner doesn't get activated, but if he has, and the both of you have, well, this is a wonderful opportunity for both of you to go into greater levels of spiritual understanding, spiritual evolution. And this is going to have a direct, Kundalini will have a direct relevance upon your physical and emotional bodies. Okay? You'll become stronger. You can become stronger. You're, you can become more disease-resistant. Uh, but you're also going to have to get rid of some of the old understandings, such as uh, uh, revenge or holding a grudge or being unforgiving or being intolerant or being impatient. These are qualities that you're going to want to let go of now. You understand? Mm-hmm. Love that man who is in your life and open to his love for you. I'm going to suggest that you come together again and again and again. But do it with now with an open conscious mind towards the kundalini. Realize that the divine has used that sexual expression within the both of you to activate self within both of you. Which is a very, very beautiful place to be. Are you there? Yeah, I'm still here. I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> wow. I'm hearing other things here. That's my daughter. I'm sorry about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hi, daughter. Hello. <laughs> so. Yeah, because I was like, I, I mean, it was very, it was, it was quite an experience. I'm going to say that, and I was like, well, that's that's just the beginning, my dear. That is just the beginning. It's going to get more and more intense and beautiful. It's going to it's be, it's going to be more of a change in your life. Make sure you look at the forgivenesses of anybody and everybody that has done harm to you in your life. And make sure you forgive yourself for whatever part you may have played in any disagreement. Do you understand? Mhm. Make sure that because you have a you have a child, I know that your tolerance levels are pretty good right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good thing. Uh, are the two of you married? Or are you planning on getting married or anything like that? We're well. The plan was to take things slow and see what happens. I didn't expect it to. You know, I'm per, I'm a person that normally I can resist that type of temptation. Yeah. And I did not expect it to go like that. Neither did him. And um is that because we're both older. He's forty and I'm thirty one. And that's not a bad that's not a bad range. No, no, that's... no. We just lot we're we're in a better place in our life that we both know what we want. And I've been hurt, he's been hurt. That kind of a thing. So yeah. just taking yeah. things out of caution. Um He's actually a little more cautious with his heart than I am. I'm very cautious with my heart, however, as well. But um, I did not expect that to happen. Neither did he. Well, and I think I think you can you can throw some of that caution to the wind now. Uh, yeah. There's there's a divine component. There's a there's a heavenly component behind your relationship, and uh, that's something that you do want to respond positively to. Yes. You don't you don't push God's hand off your shoulder. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That's true. You know, but um so, but he's... So you've been recognized. You've been recognized as two people that can come together within a kundalini context. That is not common. And that's a beautiful, beautiful, rare event. And, and I'm going to strongly suggest that the two of you honor that event in your lives. Practice those safeties daily. Write down.
the uh, the uh, the forgivenesses and and make them real, make them stick. Write yeah. down the people that have hurt you in your past, the heartbreaks that you've had in your past, and encourage him to do the same. It's called a recapitulation, is what that is called. Yeah. And right now he's a little of, he's a little distance from me right now. Um, who is who is the my friend. Your friend's distant from you right now? Um, I think it kind of scared him a little bit. You know, we're still friends and we still talk. It's just, you know. Why don't you have him listen to this radio program? It'll be archived. He can listen to this at his own pace and at his own time. Yeah. Let him hear this for himself. Let him feel this for himself. You you can't push people into these types of awareness. The awareness itself can push people, but other people, yeah. not so much. You have to just let him, give him as much information as you can, and then let him make the steps that he needs to make. Yeah. Be there and support him and love him, but have no expectations of him. Yeah. I'm learning that. I'm, I'm big time learning that. I'm not having no expectations. Right. You know, that's what I know. Sure. So, sure. You know. And and congratulations, yeah. congratulations to the both of you. Have him go to that website and have him go uh, visit those safety protocols. Those should those should be be very helpful for him at this time. Okay. All right. Definitely do. Yes, I'll definitely hear it. Thank you. And feel free to listen to the rest of the show. Okay, I will. Thank you. All right, all right. All right, and moving into the blue here. So, yes, so, so blessings to to him and her and child uh, for having such a wonderful level of grace come on to them uh, during such an intimate and, and love-filled uh, action that they were doing with each other. So that's a really, really nice, nice uh, scenario to have. Uh, and thank you, Santara, for for hovering. Now, uh, getting back to some of this stuff, and and, and the for the for the lady who I was just talking with, this has this next part you're not going to have to deal with for a very, very long time. So don't worry about that. At least not not in the next uh, few weeks. Now. As we as we last were visiting with with uh, with Julia, she she was having all of these spiritual experiences with uh, with with spiritual consciousness that were weren't always the nicest type of thing. And you got to remember that uh, outside of the physical body of the of the five senses, there are many 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 other creations and consciousness that don't necessarily subscribe to a five cents uh scenario there's 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 spiritual entities that uh, have no body and therefore they have no body they don't they don't necessarily touch feel hear see taste uh like we do but, but they have other they have other requirements and some of those requirements uh with regards to to uh yeah, here we go okay let's see some of those requirements pertain to Forcing people into corruption, forcing people into fear, forcing people into levels of activity that would go against the safety protocols, that would go against the Kundalini awakening within them, that would in some way corrupt their their awakening experience. And, and this 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 is what is typically presented for people. Uh, that are experiencing similar scenarios as Julia was experiencing. And so, of course, her mean and cruel teacher decided to take her to a movie, a movie that was exceptionally violent. Should I say the title of the movie? Sure. The title of the movie was American Sniper, which is a Clint Eastwood movie. And uh, shows a very slanted uh, version of 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 of, uh, of the war, and and a very but a very uh, particular 
version of the war for an American individual who was tasked to do a very, very, very terrible thing. Okay. And uh, I am going to hand Julia the microphone now and let her speak to what she was experiencing during the movie. And here's Julia. Hi, everybody. Okay, well, within five minutes of, um, well, first of all, I should say that before we went to the movie, Chrism had said to me, okay, I have a test for you. And when I asked what it was, he explained that we were going to go see this movie. And so I knew right off the bat that this was going to be a challenge for me. Um, So as we got to the movie, within about five minutes, um, Chrism suddenly asked me, did you, you know, what are you sensing right now? And about 30 seconds before he asked me that, I had felt, and seeing this, it was as if something huge was coming out of the screen and reaching tentacles into the audience and connecting with everyone there. And it was a really strong feeling. So I knew that Chrism had felt this too. Um, and then later as the film was going on, as they got into some of the more violent parts of the film, I mean, it was all pretty violent. Um, but they, you know, they started the film with this man's training and all of that. But as they got over to Iraq and you started to see the killing going on, I started to get the sense of the presence of, you know, these bloodlust kind of entities. And originally, Prism had asked me, you know, to sort of pay attention for jinn, which are um, entities connected with the Islamic faith. And so I was sort of thinking that, oh, it's going to be all about the jinn, but it wasn't. These were entities coming from all sides. Um, and so I felt their presence very, very strongly. And I was trying really, really hard just to ignore it. And just not to get caught up in it and just to watch the film um, as objectively as I could. And, you know, as it kept going, it kept getting more and more violent. And I was starting to visualize the Sri Yantra, which is this beautiful triangular um, mandala that Chrism has some of his students use um, in their practice. So I was visualizing that. And at one point, the violence was so terrible, I started to see blood splattering through the Sri Yantra. And I was thinking, oh, my goodness, this is horrible. I can't, you know, I, I don't know that I can handle this. And I was almost on the verge of tears. And then I remembered all these lessons that I had been learning over the past few weeks where, you know, it's not enough just to ignore these entities. It's not enough to just sort of maintain your cool in them. I needed to go into surrender and devotion and really work on that and really, you know, trust the Kundalini, trust my teacher and uh, go into that. So I started to really work on that. And I was just amazed. You know, the film was still going on, this raging violence and all this craziness. And I started to go into samadhi. It was a beautiful, beautiful... Tell them what samadhi is. Samadhi, my understanding of samadhi is it's, it's a meditative absorption that you can go into... It's, it's really, really intense bliss where everything is beautiful. Every sound is like the most beautiful sound you've ever heard. Every sight is the most beautiful sight you could ever imagine. It's just this exalted state where there's so much love pouring out of you and pouring into everyone around you, and you're just in this beautiful, perfect space where everything is absolutely perfect. So there I was going into this state in the midst of one of the most you know, horrifying, blood-drenched movies I've seen in a long time. And, you know, I was I was there for the whole rest of the film, you know, maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, maybe longer, I don't know. And so as we walked out of the film, you know, because I'm asked me, well, how are you doing? Like, he was worried, genuinely worried about me. And he had asked me actually before if I needed to leave the film because I had put my head down. This was before I went into Samadhi. And then I said, no, 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 it's okay, because I, I knew that I could handle it. But as we went out, I told him that I was in this blissful state. And I said, was that the lesson? <laughs> he just kind of nodded his head. Yeah, that was what I needed to do, you know, the surrender, the devotion. No matter what kind of entities you're dealing with, what the situation, that always seems to be the appropriate response. And I think that's what I've been learning in the, the past couple of weeks. What what happened to you yesterday along the same lines? Well, I was practicing a morning meditation. And uh, I, again, not only did I go into samadhi, but I started having some kriyas as well, um, where my hands were being forced up above my head in a, in a mudra shape. And then around and up to my heart um, with the energy projecting out my arms through my heart. And then up again above my head. And 
it was just a beautiful, beautiful feeling. Lots of tears. <laughs> yeah. And so how has all this samadhi affected your relationship with the understanding that discarnate entities exist? I think one of the, the realizations that I had after going into samadhi during that movie is that, you know, through the devotion and the surrender, you know, Kundalini can give us this state. And that is a wonderful state to be in if there are people suffering around you, if there are entities around you, because somehow you're projecting your radiance into the environment. And that's helpful for people. It's helpful for you. It's, it's healing for the people around you. That's my understanding. I don't know if that's correct. Yeah. Well, when you, were, when you were walking in the mall last time, and uh, can you describe to them what you were seeing um, again? Yeah, I had posted about this on the, the main Facebook oh, Kundalini Awakening group. Uh, it was last week where I had been waiting for Chrism in a shopping mall, and I had seen, started to feel and then see the presence of these really nasty, ugly entities, and they were coming up to me. One of them was you know, trying to touch me on the face and on the arm, and um, I had just tried to ignore them again, um, as I had in the other situations, and then realized that I needed to go into devotion and surrender. So I did that, and I went into bliss again. So consistently, this is what's happening. Um, yeah, is that what you... Mm. Well, no, okay, so so as you're seeing those, are you just seeing negative stuff all the time? Is there never a positive thing that that is also there? Uh, committing acts of balance between the good and the evil? Well, initially, that's all I was seeing until you told me, you know, you can change the channel on this. And you started, we had left the shopping mall, and I think this was another day. Um, we were at Chipotle, we were having supper, and you started pointing out all these children to me, and you said, can you see the angels on these children? And so I started to, at first I had, I didn't. And then I started to look, and I started to see these rays of light coming down. And there was one where it looked like maybe it was a grandmother or some, you know, relative very close to that child, sending lots and lots of love to that child. So yeah, as I as I started to look, I would I would be able to see these too. But until you had said that to me, oh, you can change the channel. It didn't occur to me that I could. Well, now if, if anybody else has a um, has a question or a comment to make about uh, this subject, this aspect of the subject, I'd like, I'd like you to feel free to call in at 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. Now, have you had any dreams where the entities have come to you in your dreams while you've been here at the ashram that you can recall? Oh, yeah, I did. Um, after the the night that we saw the American sniper, I had a very violent dream. I dreamed that I saw this this woman, this poor woman. She was trying to get at something that I believed was mine. And I thought that, you know, I was justified in stopping her with any means necessary. So, of course, it was a dream, so it was quite surreal. I picked her up. She became very small in my hand, and I put her into this beautiful cloth bag, um, and so I picked up the bag and I started slamming it down on the side of a, of a wooden dresser over and over again, you know, thinking that I was justified in doing that. And, of course, then I was horrified by my actions. But then the dream ended. Well, the dream ended right as you were horrified with your actions, which, which was the desired outcome. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think what, what that dream and what some of the other experiences are, are teaching is that even though the entities are there and they may be, they may be causing us uh, to experience difficulties, um, it isn't all about getting revenge. It isn't all about uh, oh, dropping the iPad. <laughs> it's, not, it's not about dropping the iPad. Uh, it isn't about... Um, even even as much as protecting oneself against these entities, because the greatest the greatest way to deflect uh, entity or negative entity issues are to not have any handles for them to grab onto. 
And when you're in devotion, when you've given yourself so completely to the Kundalini and to your teacher, to that special trinity that you are, you, the Kundalini, and your teacher, there be, you, know, you become very, very slippery. Nobody can really grab onto you. No negative entity can grab onto you, and no positive entity will even try. And as much negativity as, as there is out there, and this is a land of, of negativity, there's also positive forces. Uh, if, if you look on the YouTube uh, video selections that I have, if you go to the Sedona, or not Sedona, but the, the Rennes-le-Chateau uh, video, you'll see a demon that represents the ego that is holding up the virtues over its head and that is a message of of the ego the, the 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 big monster that the ego can become being forced to hold the virtues uh as a way of the virtues gaining dominance over the ego what on earth is this my gosh let me just do this there we go so yeah yeah uh Julie, Julia's experience is really all about uh, finding the love and finding the effect that the love can have on discarnates, uh, as opposed to finding the fear and having the fear affect her uh, negatively from a discarnate source. Uh, it's very, very important for people to make that distinction. Love and grace and beauty and joy and surrender and that personal trinity that I just told you about, that is the way. That is the way to see your way through these sometimes difficult areas. Now, I'm focusing on, on the entity issue here because, number one, it's a real life-shattering, a real reality-shattering event. Um, uh, Julia, how did you feel when you first uh, became cogent or cognizant of entities? Discarnate entities. You know, I first really became aware of them, you know, in a very tactile, hands-on way when I was doing my acupuncture internships in school. That was several years ago. I was working at the Salvation Army and also at uh, an HIV center and doing acupuncture at both places. And I was working with a lot of people who had addiction issues, um, mainly alcohol and and methamphetamines. And uh, I just saw with these people... Um, that they were really struggling, that many of them had entities embedded, usually on the, the left shoulder, right in the neck, and uh, reaching around there. And that was really frightening for me. That was just terrifying because they would look at me or the, the person would look at me and you could see the entity looking through their eyes and sometimes speaking through them. And that was a terrifying experience. Yeah, yeah. That, it, can, it can be a life-altering, life-shattering experience, really. In many ways, um, and so it's. I think it's important for people to understand that that yeah yeah this is this is real. This is not some sort of a made up. Uh, it's not a made up scenario. Okay, and uh, looks like I'm being interrupted here. And Paul has a question, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to bring Paul on. Hello, Mister. Paul, how are you, Paul? Hi, hi. I'm, I'm, I'm great. How are, you, how, are you how are you doing? How are you doing? Good, thank you. Good, good. What's your uh, question? Uh, well, I just well, wanted some uh, uh, some general uh, feedback, feedback about. Uh, 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 sorry, I've got an echo sorry, going. Let me get rid of that. Get rid of that. Okay. Oh, what happened here? Sorry, that's sorry, me, Kristen. I. There's a repeat. Have you got? Have I, have I got what? Have you got have two um, things have, happening there in the room? There. No. No, no, no. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm okay, good. This okay, this is new. All right. I'm going to put you back in the blue. See if I can get Paul on again. And uh, thank you for hovering. And here we are. Uh, Paul got you back here. I think. I hope so. I hope. Yeah. You have to forgive blog talk. It it has its uh, its bugs, shall we say? <laughs> is is there still 
Is there still a little bit of feedback on my end? No, no, you sound very clear, very clear. Okay, perfect. Okay. I didn't have I didn't, a, uh, you know what, you know what? I've got a little bit of I've feedback on my side. But, uh, but uh, I didn't have I didn't, a uh, specific question, but I did want to uh, see if I could get a little bit of feedback on my uh, my path. Okay. Um, because I because I, I am, am attempting to move toward you know a, a, an increased level of uh, commitment uh, and devotion uh, as part of this process. Um, you know, I do you have know, I, um, uh, active, active uh, uh, a type of active Kundalini phenomenon. What type do you have, Paul? You know what? I, I'm hesitant to say it's a top-down activation because I think it's a little bit more generalized than that. But uh, uh, when I was uh, studying... Uh, Academically, uh, you know, I, my focus was fairly myopic, and uh, I did have a type of uh, activation event um, at that time. And, uh, and and since then, I've been able to work with uh, the energy in uh, in a more uh, sort of dispersed way. Um, how, so I am do, actively. How, how do you mean by a dispersed way? Uh, I just mean uh, by uh, integrating the energy. Uh, 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 beyond um sort of beyond the the crown and uh and, and brow uh region um it, sounds, it does sound like you have somewhat of a top down scenario going there paul yeah yeah a, a little bit um but uh i am cognizant of that and i'm working uh, to meet uh, that somewhere in the middle do you have a teacher are you following the advice of a teacher i am following uh your advice um where i can collect it um across you, the uh, across the web you you poor soul <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm just kidding no yeah no um yeah you you've, you've got some great information um out there and which i'm very appreciative of and uh there are some other sources as well but uh no not a uh, a flush teacher as it were okay all right well okay well, top downs can be a little more challenging than bottom to tops either way it's going to be a challenging scenario okay either way the, the, right and, and it has been it has been that way somewhat although i i i, I will uh give myself some credit i think i've been dealing with it um uh, okay um but yeah no it, it's definitely been challenging uh you know particularly from a uh I mean, it was basically, yeah. There's lots of, there was lots of energy in my in my head, and it was difficult for me to concentrate and and uh, and focus. Uh, you know, I, I, I first obviously I thought it was a medical issue. Um, you know, I even thought maybe I had a slight strabismus in my in my left eye because I could I couldn't focus as well as I uh, as I could previously. But but since then, I think I have uh, advanced in my understanding, and uh, and and I'm and I'm happy about that. But I'm sort of I was I have been dealing with it and and like you say it is challenging uh but i think that i'm i'm ready to meet that challenge and and take more of a, a committed devotional path and uh so that's basically where i'm at <laughs> okay all right uh have you been able to practice the safeties at all are you familiar with those yes i'm familiar with the uh with the safeties and i have uh, been using them as uh as a guideline f- for sure um probably not a, as uh probably not as as strictly as i as i could be but but certainly uh as a general guide absolutely yeah um yeah well with the top down the, one of the sweetest things that you can do with a top down awakening is to uh a, to to bring the energy through your actions through your meditations uh-huh. your through your practice of the safeties from the top crown down to the heart and then the to bring the uh, the bottom three chakras, first, second, and third, up to the heart, and to have a heart activation. They're very, very beautiful, very amazing. And this is what I'm going to I'm going to suggest that you try to do, my friend. Yeah, I, I I'm definitely um, aimed at at, at that, um, and uh, certainly uh, I I do have. Uh, a fair amount of uh 
energy or activity in the uh, in the heart region already. So I, I think I am definitely headed that way. Um, but yeah, there's definitely been some hurdles and that kind of thing. Just, uh, you know, some generalized anxiety and that kind of thing. And, you know, dealing with daily responsibilities of, of work and, uh, and, and that kind of thing and, and social relationships and, uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, are you but all the, in all, sorry, go ahead. Are you, on the, are you on the Facebook groups? No, I'm not on the Facebook groups. I don't have an active Facebook account, but, uh, <laughs> that's not a bad thing. <laughs> no. How about the Yahoo group? I have uh, viewed the Yahoo group. I have not. Uh, I don't have a login or anything like that. If, if that's uh, if that's an, an active uh, form and, and somewhere that I could uh, get some information and value, I, I certainly would check it out for sure. Yeah, check out the the, the Yahoo. It's much slower than uh-huh. Facebook, which is not a bad thing in my opinion. Right. Uh, but there is a lot of information there, and it has a really good search engine, and so you can put. You know your question, or the, so, you know a, a subject that you want to discuss uh, on on you know in the search engine in that group, and and, and probably get some pretty good uh, information for it. Right now, information is your is, is your biggest friend. Uh, the more information you have about your activation, about your awakening, the greater level of surrender and devotion you're going to be able to put into it. If you'd like to email me privately with any of your con- questions or concerns, uh, please feel free to go to kfireforall at yahoo.com, and that's K, as in Kundalini, F-I-R-E-F-O-R-A-L-L at yahoo.com. And, and uh, would you like to continue listening uh, to the show, Paul? Definitely I would. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Putting you into the blue. And that was Paul, and, and I just want to I just want to compliment Paul for for having the courage and, and having having the Kundalini come to him at all is just a, such a huge blessing, uh, not only for Paul but, but for everyone around Paul, for for everyone that is falling within his gift of radiance, uh, he is giving them a, 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 a wonderful healing, a wonderful level of teaching just by being a recipient of grace. And so, Paul, nice, nicely done, nice going. And I know that you may not have gone out there with the whole intent on ha- having this happen, but you don't get kundalini in an accidental fashion. Even if you were skiing down a slope and, and you took a tumble and you landed into a tree and you you know broke your tailbone or something like that and the kundalini came up, that would not be accidental. And even though this is not what happened to you, I'm just using that as an illustration to find to 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 let you know how 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 much of a planned event this would be, and and you know I listen to your voice and I listen to your to your 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 ability to self-express and I really see uh, tangible evidence of a person that's going to be coming very very strong in a very beautiful way into their Kundalini awakening and so I really want you to pay attention. Uh, to Julia's experiences here with the entities and and do go into the past episodes so that you can kind of be brought up to speed with uh, with her story and what she has gone through. Uh, now Julia's path is, is 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 you know markedly different from anybody else's. You know um, everybody's Kundalini path is is going to be very very different and yet have some similarities. Uh, so Paul, if you would like to go into the last show, you. Uh, they are archived. You can get in there. I don't know quite how to explain how to do that, but but they can get in there. And uh, I just want to say once again, thank you, Paul, for asking such an astute and and well expressed question and communication about your your Kundalini uh, awakening scenario. And if if you haven't gone to the YouTube yet, you know, go to those YouTube videos. Uh, the uh, the name on the YouTube network is Chrisum.Kundalini, or you can just go Chrisum Kundalini, it'll get you there. And I have some specific videos that are are definitely top-down oriented. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, well, what a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, communication from Paul. And, and once again, I want to thank you for calling into the program. Uh, how did you feel about that, Julia? Well, it's always good to hear a fellow Canadian. <laughs> I recognize that accent. Um, 
Yeah, I think that's just a beautiful um, description of what it can be like. I also started with a bit of a top-down activation, and uh, with Chrism's help, I was able to integrate that and have a beautiful, gentle spinal sweep starting from the tailbone up and integrating all of the chakras in that. So, um, yeah, I definitely encourage you to keep going the way you're going and keep following those safeties. Excellent advice, my dear. Excellent advice. Okay. Uh, so as we as we move onward with with uh, uh, Julia, with your experience with the entities now, now when you look at the whole entity phenomenon, and of course I'm going around, you know, we're walking around town or we're going somewhere here and there, and I go out of the blue, I'll say, Julia, what are you seeing? What are you seeing? And she'll tell me what she's seeing. And typically, how are you handling it now? How is it affecting you? Well, first of all, I'm not as fascinated by it as I was. I mean, it seems like the last two weeks I've been experiencing almost every kind of entity (laughs) you can experience. You know, they're they're the shopping mall ones. And, you know, Kism explained to me that they will try to look fearful as possible. So they may not appear to others the same way that they appear to me. Um, But then, so there's the ones that sort of cling on to passersby and they look for an opening in the person. And I remember the next day after the shopping mall scenario, I woke up feeling very angry. And I think that, you know, an aspect of some of these entities is that they're just very angry and they like to inspire that kind of feeling. So I had that experience. And then we went to a brew pub to have dinner. Now, 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 let me, let me, let me, um, it, 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 it was indeed a brew pub. But we weren't going there to drink. <laughs> they had great they, organic food. They had really good organic food, mind you, everyone. The, the, they just, for some reason, decided to connect a bar to it. And go ahead, my dear. Okay, so we didn't have any alcohol or anything. But while I was there, the entities I was seeing um, were very sad. They were probably earthbound spirits who had been indulging in spirits. Um, and they were associated with the alcohol. So the very next day, I woke up feeling very sad. Well, you actually were touched by one, were you not? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. How could I forget? I um, We were sitting at a, at a table in the center, and um, I felt a hand press into my shoulder from behind on the right side. And I, I thought it was the waitress. And I, I turned around to look, and there was no one there. Um, so that was quite a frightening experience. Yeah, it's not you know, seeing it's one thing, feeling it's another. And when you can see and feel it, oh my gosh, what a what a you know, what a uh, it can be a a very constructive and yet very very surprising experience. With the entities that that uh yeah, and and Julia has been on this fast track with the entities, and I think that 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 is once again a timing that is being controlled by the kundalini, not so much by by Julia or by any of the practices that we're doing. It just seems to be the way the Kundalini in Julia uh, wants to have her uh, metabolize some of these subjects. Uh, She's on a very, very fast track. But yet, i got to tell you, with Julia, when we talk about Julia, we're talking about a person that can go into devotion for five hours. At a pop. Okay, so she starts at one and she ends up at six. Think about that. This is a person that isn't incremental in her devotional practices. She's very, very strong. She's very, very consistent. And she's very, very surrendering into this process. Am I right, Julia? Yeah, yeah. And I feel like there's room for improvement every day. I mean, it's go deeper and deeper. You know, and, and, you know, as we begin to talk about the, the, the deconstruction of a person's reality vis-a-vis entities, let's also, you know, you know, let's also talk about the deconstruction of a person's life based upon what the Kundalini wants to see happen. And this is often very, very, very difficult for people to understand that, that the Kundalini would indeed want them to change their life in such a drastic way. Let's just use the marriage, for example. A kundalini, uh, one, say, say one spouse is kundalini active, the other spouse isn't, uh, and great disparities are happening in the, in, the, in the relationship because of that. Kundalini can just come along and say, no, no, this marriage is not supportive of the divine gift within this spouse's life. This marriage must be terminated. 
And how, oh my gosh, how does one come to grips with something like that? And this is not an uncommon scenario. This can happen, you know, to, to many, many different uh, uh, Kundalini awakened people, many of whom are married, many of whom are not being supported uh, in their Kundalini awakening by a spouse, and some of whom will be taken to a psych ward by the worry and fear that that spouse has for the different Kundalini phenomena that they might observe. And so these are very, very, very strong conditions that the kundalini is bringing into a person's life. And it's not easy, folks. It's not easy, especially if you have some love for that spouse, if it's a a marriage that's being terminated. But the scenario is this. Kundalini is the most powerful energy uh, that the human being in the flesh body can hold, can have or hold. Uh, when it says a certain thing must occur, then that thing will occur whether or not the kundalini person is in agreement with it. It will occur. And that is something that you really need to begin to to look at in your life. If you have kundalini like Paul, you know, Paul uh, has kundalini and he's going to have to make some changes in his life. Along the lines of what the kundalini determines is best for him. Julia. Julia is going to have to make some changes in her life. And I don't mean small ones. I mean life changes that are big, that are bombastic, that are just so mind-blowing that even now it would just bring a person to tears. Okay, these changes must occur. You must be able to surrender Surrender control of your life to your special trinity, to your kundalini and your teacher and yourself. Most of the changes are going to be big, whether it's, you know, an enforced version of celibacy. You know, let's just say that a, a person really likes to have sex, enjoys sex. You know, get as much sex as you possibly can. Give sex to yourself if you can't find it from other. I mean, sex, 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 sex. Okay, the whole ideology of personal enjoyment may be all wrapped around sex. And then Kundalini comes along and says, oh, by the way, in addition to your other changes, I think some temporary, uh, 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 what's the word? Celibacy. celibacy is in store for you. Oh yeah, don't don't worry. You you can handle it. it. Might be just for a few years. Temporary celibacy for a person that identifies so strongly with the sexual act as as you know being this great source of of enjoyment and pleasure and validation in addition to all these amazing nutrients that can come into the body because of the expression of this one activity of human nature oh my gosh you mean i can't even give it to myself no celibacy means celibacy doesn't mean it's forever which of course the person's ego is gonna grab on oh you mean i can never have sex ever again no it doesn't mean that it just means for a certain amount of time that kundalini is going to use those energies for other purposes, typically towards your transformation, your your physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, psychological transformations, and those energies are used for those purposes. But the person's ego is not going to like this. And it's a great opportunity to see how strong the person's ego is on the person. So think about this, folks. This is not the easiest thing, and I, I know a lot of you, a lot of you that are in the chat room, you know, you guys, you guys have pretty much walked this path already. Uh, but for, for many of you who are listening in the archives, you haven't walked this path yet, or you're just starting to, such as Paul, you're, you're just starting to walk this path, and, and uh, 
you know, Paul, Paul says he's handling it fairly well. I, I'm not, you know, I, I want to be very complimentary to him. Uh, he sounds like he's doing well. And, uh, and I want to, you know, if I can do anything to help him continue to do well, then I most certainly will. I also had to, con- to, uh, to go into complete surrender to my kundalini. I had to go through like 11, 12 years of celibacy for my changes to occur. Okay? I'm not speaking from, from a vacuum here. I've walked this talk. This is why the kundalini has chosen me because, you know, it made me do everything but, but you know, do flips off a high wire into the Niagara Falls. I mean, I mean, and those of you who are from Canada know about the Niagara Falls. Am I right? That's right. <laughs> so for those of you who are listening into the archives or those of you who are listening on your computer right now, surrendering to the kundalini is the most important aspect of your interaction with the kundalini. You don't get to control it. You don't get to call the shots. You don't get to make the choices that you used to make. Now you go through the kundalini first. You go through your, your teacher you find a, a way of putting your ego on hold. Okay. Now entities, when entities come into your life, that is a you know, that's a great, wonderful gift from the Kundalini in it. It's an indication of the third eye opening up. Okay. Uh, being able to see that which nobody else can see, which and it's an important thing, you know. Julia doesn't go around you know, shouting at the top of her lungs, oh, my gosh, you see these horrible, ugly entities. They're all around you. They're touching you. They're stroking your baby. Oh, my God. You know, you don't hear her doing that. You don't. You don't hear her doing that because she knows better. She knows that nobody else can really see what she's seeing, but that doesn't make her crazy. That just makes her far more aware in certain ways than the other people walking around the mall. And she also knows not to self-aggrandize or to to bring undue uh, positive or negative attention to herself while she's having these phenomena. And plus, you know, she's walking with me, and I'm not going to let that happen anyway. Okay. Very important for people who are beginning to, to come into the path of devotion to look at the path of surrender first. If you're coming into devotion uh, to the Kundalini and the Kundalini teacher at the same time, which which most of my students are doing, well, then you need to begin to surrender your control. Surrender the control over your mind. Let the Kundalini control your mind. Let your teacher help you think the, the appropriate areas of thought patterns for you to have that allow you to come into a balance and harmony with the kundalini such as forgiveness and tolerance and honesty you know patience and diligence and truth these are the areas that you really want to look at these are the areas of love from the divine everything that i just mentioned is just a subset of divine love that is the overarching, overreaching cement that holds everything in this physical universe together. And here I got to have a drink of my chrysanthemums here. Here's, let me give you an example. So Julia uh, says to me, I think, uh, I think it was over Skype one day, it's just like, yeah, I'd love to come down to the ashram and, and spend some time with you. And How's January look? And, well, I didn't have anything planned for January, so it looked pretty good. And I'm asking my kundalini about it. The kundalini says, well, you know, she's not in these words. It's precisely, it's more, of a, it's, it's more of a telepathic communication that doesn't require words. But you know, she's, she's got the Chinese thing going. She's got that... Uh, Chinese medicine. In China, she's considered a doctor. And I go, yeah, and? And I want you to do what she asks you to do with regards to her Chinese medicine uh, suggestions for you. And I'm going, really? (laughs) Why is this? You know, and then Kundalini goes on and tells me she has some very positive 
interactions that are of a medicinal nature for you, and I want you to honor her knowledge. I want you to honor her presence, and I want you to honor her studies and pay attention and do what she asks you to do. So you know what I've been drinking? Some of you who are familiar with Chinese medicine may know. I've been drinking some sort of a flower that they make a pesticide out of for the National Park Service. (laughs) Hmm. I kid you not. But it's not bad. It's not bad tasting. It kind of tastes like old water, kind of stale water. But it's not bad, and, and I'll keep on doing it. She's got me drinking a soup that has all kinds of weird stuff in it that you can't even pronounce. She's doing all kinds of stuff here, and guess what Chrisom's doing? Chrisom is surrendering because his kundalini gave him that instruction. So, of course, he's going to surrender. And this is also what I'm suggesting to you. You may, you may be in a position of authority, and the kundalini may come to you and, and, and point out the janitor that's cleaning out the bathroom of, of, of the office building that you own, right? You're the top dog. You're the, you're the, the CEO. Everybody works for you. And yet the kundalini comes in and says, pay attention to that janitor, janitor. He has some advice for you. Go over there and ask him what it is. And you would do well to take your ego, put it... Uh, Put it in a chair looking out the window, tell it to enjoy the view, and then go over and talk to that janitor and ask him if he has any suggestions that he'd like to make. And to to accept those suggestions as a real positivity. Because this is what your kundalini wants to have happen. You pay attention and you follow the instructions of the divine that is coming into you, awakening within you, activating within you. You pay attention to these life-changing suggestions because they work for you. Within a kundalini context, the advice, even if it seems weird, even if it seems so outlandish, it's there to work for you. And if you surrender to it, it'll work for you even better. Have you found that to be the case, Julia? Have you had any kind of a really, I mean, aside from the entities, have you had any kind of a of a difficult but huge life-changing opportunity present itself from the Kundalini or your teacher? Uh, yes, <laughs> very much so. And, and how, how are you handling that? You know, it's hard because it's still, I'm right at the beginning of it, really, and it's difficult. I'm really working with this, but having had all this experience with the entities and, uh, you know, working with you as my teacher, I have some tools now and I have a sense that I can, I can do this, you know, that I can get through it. I know what to do. Well, there you go. There you go. It's really important that you pay attention uh, to these suggestions. Now, if anybody has a, a question about this level of surrender and about the entities, or if you're, you know, like Paul, uh, if you have a question about your own level of activity within a, within the Kundalini, please call this number. It is 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. This includes all of you listening on your computers right now who aren't in the chat room. I want you to feel free to call in. And uh, the, once again, the number is 347-934-0026. And continuing. So as you can see, uh, devotions is a very, very, very important safety. Now, I haven't really put that into the safety because in a way, you have to be able to practice the safeties first before you can really come in to an understanding of the importance of devotion. But I will be writing more and more and more about devotion, you know, as time goes by, because it is one of the most positive, blessed ways to come into a happy, joyful, ecstatic kundalini awakening. Uh, Sometimes you got to burn through the karma. That typically is what happens before a person has the uh, finds a teacher. There are plenty of teachers out there that, you know, that ostensibly the kundalini would choose from. 
uh, that would that would allow for you to have levels of information that you currently don't have. Uh, the Kundalini will assign that teacher to you. If the Kundalini has assigned Krishna to be your teacher, if you're seeing him come in your dreams, if you're hearing the the the, the voice in your head say, you know, Krishna, you need to talk to Krishna, you need to write to Krishna, then do it. Don't hesitate any longer. I'm open to interacting with you, whoever you are. And that includes those listening in the archives. I don't care if it's a year from now. This is uh, January 28th, 2015. I don't care if it's January 28th, 2017, or 16, or 18. You try getting a hold of me. If I'm alive, then I will answer you. I will help you. I don't, I'm not allowed not to. That's what my kundalini has instructed me to do, is to help people coming into this grace. Okay? And I don't care if you, if, if some guru gave you Shakti thought, well, then, you know, I'll, I'll question you. I'll say, well, why isn't this guru helping you? If he gave you Shakti thought, then he should be able to follow up. But I've learned long ago that these gurus don't do that. They'll give you Shakti thought, they'll have you awaken your kundalini, and then off you go. And off they go in the opposite direction. You know, quite a major level of irresponsibility, in my opinion, but that is the way it is. Another way can be the way the, uh, the, uh, the young lady uh, who called earlier, you know, uh, just making love with that one person, that one person who can trigger this experience within you. And there it is. And there you go. And, and here she's calling up the show. Very important. Very important that you learn to respond to the to the uh, stimulus that your kundalini is giving you. Doesn't matter how you've activated your kundalini. I mean, it does to some degree with you know, like were you doing hallucinogens? Were you, uh, you know, was it you know some sort of a a pain based awakening, BDSM things like that? Oh, let's talk about BDSM a little bit here. There's this movie uh, uh, coming out called Fifty Shades of Grey. And, you know, this is not what you want to encounter with regards to Kundalini. Okay. BDSM can be a vector that entities will guide a person into in order to, to weld the pain and pleasure areas of the brain together. And some people come into that pre-welded. Pretty well did. But this is not something that I'm going to suggest people participate in. It is not helpful in that way. I mean, if it's, if, you know, if the Kundalini tells you to do it, well, that's a different scenario. That's a different scenario. But make sure that the Kundalini is telling you to do this. Uh, pain is, is there as a teaching instrument. Pleasure is there as a teaching instrument. Let yourself be taught by these measures of, of pain and pleasure, but don't let yourself be be controlled by either pain or pleasure. Let yourself step beyond those areas. You know, a lot of kundalini people can fall into excessive levels of pornography or, or excessive levels of lust, uh, sometimes uh, levels of lib libidinous activity that, that is illegal. And it's not because the kundalini is leading them that way. It's because entities are leading them that way and the person is responding. So you stick to your ethics. Do no harm. Do no harm. Okay. So we're going to turn the page here. If anybody would like to talk about these subjects or any other subjects, please feel free to call the number 347-934-0026. I would like to bring Her Holiness Rosemary on board. Rosemary! Yes. Hi, how are you doing? I'm I'm good. Do you have Waiting any announcements you'd like to make? Yes, I do. That uh, you'll be here pretty soon and here in Minnesota, and we have a seminar in September, yeah, yes, 
February 21st and 22nd, and before that time, the week and the week and a half before that, you will be around giving talks, and that will be available. Um, that's on the Facebook page of Kundalini Seminars and Events with Chrisom. And it is uh, at the Best Western Hotel, again, as we had in September. And my phone number is 651 Four five two three one six one, and Rosemary G at usinternet dot com. Now, do we have and, a? Is there is there also a conference going on? Yes, we're the expo. Yes. Yes, on the reason Christmas is coming early is we have the opportunity to be part of a an expo here in Minneapolis uh, it, that is Healthy Living Expo. And he will be, we have a booth there, those of you in Minnesota and in the Twin Cities. That's uh, the Saturday and Sunday, February 7th and 8th. And Kristen will be speaking also both days at 1 o'clock. And it will be a double segment, so I'm thinking probably an hour and a half or so. So we'll be looking for you. And we have prepared uh, Kristen's CDs. Eileen has taken care of that, and we'll have some DVDs of the Kundalini film. And also, Chrisom, you have something for us? Well, yeah, it's, it's interesting you should bring that up. Julie and I have been working on putting a publication together, and uh, we're hopeful to have that publication intact uh, or on its way by by the time we get there for the, uh, for the, the uh, expo, as you call it, and, uh, and certainly for the... Uh, for the uh, the seminar in in the Twin Cities at the Best Western Dakota Ridge, and I would love to see people from Minnesota, people from Canada, people from Ohio and Iowa and Wisconsin and the Dakotas. I would love to see you and meet you in St. Paul, Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, at either the conference or the seminar or both and uh, really begin to discuss the Kundalini with you. And, and if you haven't got that going, if you want to get it going, then we'll get it going. And if you just need more information, well, we'll do that too. Thank you, my dear Rosemary. You're welcome. And coming over to Her Holiness, the Queen of Questionable Comforts, Zantara, how are you? How are you, Your Holiness? I'm- I'm fine. Thank you, Chrism. Really enjoying listening to Julia. Um, I wanted to say to Paul, if he's interested in, um, you know, Facebook, he could just create an ID just for the purpose of being able to go to Facebook and ask questions and interact, you know, Paul, yeah, whatever, it, it, you know, that can be helpful for people. That can be very helpful. Yeah, you just create some ID. It doesn't have to be you. You know, I sometimes uh, on the address, I'll put 123 Sesame Street, wherever, you know, and, and, uh, and, you know, and then a bogus phone number. I don't believe in necessarily giving everybody my private details unless they're Kundalini people that are looking into it. Uh, so, Paul, yes, you can certainly do that. And you're also welcome on that Yahoo group as well. And Either way you go, my friend, if you get a hold of me or you, you start you join that group or whatever you want to do, let me know it's you, and uh, and we'll definitely get things going for you if, if, if you're interested in that. And and I understand, Santara, that you may have some questions for us. You understand what, Chrism? Oh, questions, That's, is it? Yes. <laughs> yes, waking up. <laughs> Indeed, I do. Okay, the first question came in today into the inbox and specifically for the show and to ask you this. So I'm quoting here from Elliot. When you get conflicting information or images and messages from Kundalini, how do you determine what is correct to follow? Is that also a form of testing? For example, I have been shown not to eat meat for the time. And then I have also been shown the Christian Bible verse that states, quote, what goes into a man doesn't defile him. It is what comes out of a man that can. Is this two different options? Is it a test? I have been vegetarian well, since I, per- Sorry. I since I first got the message. I'm not sure if 
either way is okay. Which way is well, okay? Well, I, I, I really like what his kundalini is telling him, you know, not to eat the meat, and then what goes into a man doesn't necessarily defile him, right? Yes, what it doesn't defile him. It's what comes out of a man that can. Well, this is true. And, and so what the kundalini is telling uh, uh, the person to do is is to, first of all, not eat meat. But then, as because as you're not eating meat, you're you're being kind of switched into a to a higher vibrational rate, which in which conversely can slow the body down a little bit, make it easier to meditate, that type of a thing, take you out of the carnivore carnivoristic uh, instincts of of rapid uh, acceleration or or you know I- extreme uh, levels of 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 hunting behavior. Uh, but what it's it's also telling on the other side is that it's not what you eat that causes your defilement. It is it is what is is how you choose to express that can cause your defilement. And in this case, what it it would be what your ego is allowed to express that can form levels of of difficulty upon a person, which the Bible is calling defilement. Uh, how do you choose to allow the ego to express within you? It's not what you're eating that is controlling the ego. It's what you're thinking. It's what you're allowing the ego to do. That can can form and shape an individual's uh, level of, to quote the Bible, defilement. Uh, the Bible is not one that I will uh, that I would actively use as as a as a Kundalini uh, a book of the Kundalini. Although it can be if you use it in a divinatory way, it can it can be very helpful uh, uh, as as Magdalene de Deus has done and as I've done that with her to show her the divination method with the Bible. But uh, in, in the one in in, in this instance. Yeah, yeah, it is. This actually, they go together. It is a test, but it is also a level of information that's being given to the person. This is Elliot. Yes. yes. Well, for for you, my friend Elliot, it is a single line of information for you. Stop eating the meat, i.e., lighten up, i.e., uh, don't. Don't kill other mammals at this point and consume them. Not that that's bad. We're not put, placing a judgment value on that like so many vegans and vegetarians love to do. Uh, so we're just saying stop eating the flesh at the moment and don't see it as a connection to whether or not you're being defiled by flesh. It's not, the, it's not what you're eating. It's not what's going into you that determines your level of defilement. It is what is coming out of you. It is your actions, your attitudes, your thoughts, your beliefs. Okay, that is what is forming any level of defilement that you might have. And Elliot, you're doing great, my friend. You're doing great to even ask that question. Keep up the good work. Thank That's you, right. Prison. Next question. Um, a few days back, while doing meditation, I saw a blue girl eagle, and no matter how much I tried to drag away my attention from there, I couldn't. What is it? Well, the blue is a kundalini color. And if you saw a blue girl eagle, that would represent the sacred feminine joined uh, with the sacred masculine, blue being the masculine color, and the spirit taking flight because of that joining. This would be definitely a kundalini activation and awakening symbol. And you will not be allowed to ignore it. You will not be allowed to take it out of your consciousness. It will stay there for quite some time. And I would recommend that you draw it on a picture. Color it in. Okay, this is a very, very strong and powerful uh, message of kundalini activation for that person. And uh, and I want to congratulate them. Embrace this condition. Surrender to this condition. Don't try to clear it out of your mind. Let it become your mind. 
Next one. Is memory loss common, and how and does it get better again? Yes. Yeah, you can, especially with Kundalini. Kundalini sometimes will take over the thought processes or, or, or the different processes of the brain that that uh, that that have an effect upon uh, memory and grammatic uh, development. Uh, so as the Kundalini takes over these processes, you may not actively make an, an engram-based memory, and so there will be nothing stored in your brain to go back to because the action wasn't necessarily developed by you. It was developed by the Kundalini. And so no engram was stored. Now, it's not all the time that that will happen, but it will happen some of the time. And that can form a level of memory loss as well. And another action, uh, engrams that you have developed and you have made, uh, you may not be allowed to necessarily go there because other aspects of the brain are being transformed and through that transformation, those synapses and those levels of the brain uh, are being used by the Kundalini for a different purpose, a different level of memory uh, uh, entrainment, a different level of interaction that the Kundalini wants you to have. And at that time, you may not be able to remember, but five minutes from there, you will. You will remember it. So this is not a, a, a an endless scenario. You're not... You're not coming into senility, okay? You're not, you're not having any of these types of issues, although it may feel that way sometimes. It's not. You just have to remember that you're inside of a transformative experience. You are changing. And as you change, certain levels of brain function are going to change with you, and that often can include the, the ability to remember Next question. Okay, now this question comes up often, Chris, but I'm going to ask it again for people who are new to the program. Does anyone else notice electrical equipment going haywire around them, particularly cell phones, televisions, computers, or alarm clocks connected with their Kundalini activation? Oh yeah, yeah, that that is a very common experience. Uh, but let's 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 uh, let's expand it into your car your car's computer, let's expand it into your electric watch, let's extend, expand it into your cell phone, and of course she mentioned the television, stereo, computers, uh, DVD players, uh, what is that little box that you play music from, what's that called? IPod. iPods. Uh, all these things can be definitely affected by the Kundalini, and some of them can be ruined as I have a lovely graveyard of laptops that have been ruined. and uh, But thanks to one of my students, they gave me a little device that allows me to suck that memory <laughs> thing dry so I can keep all my information, which is very cool, and I recommend everyone get one. It's in the very, very inexpensive. Uh, so, yeah, the hard drive can be, can be harvested now. Uh, so don't throw your computers away if you have information on your hard drives that you want to get, you retrieve that information first, then you can have that, uh, that computer recycled. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, that is very, very, very common. The electrical impulses are, are disrupted and in some way uh, ruined as, as a stronger force of energetic current is pushed through them vis-a-vis -vis the Kundalini. And this can indeed ruin, ruin your electrical equipment and, you know, and I just want to say, just along those lines, that there's a there's a blessed, blessed woman out there. Her name is Josephine Smith. She is a wonderful, wonderful woman. She lives down in Southern California, and she she was really nice to me. Uh, she bought a uh, she bought me a phone that allows me to Skype on the go with people, so that I can do my Skypes, so I can do my work. Wherever I wherever I need to go, and another student named Ed who, who wants to remain anonymous, so that's as far as we're going to get with him. Uh, he also bought a uh, you know donated a a Verizon internet access box, so that can be connected up and and 
These are things that the Kundalini uses, and guess what? They don't get messed with. Isn't that interesting? Shows a real degree of intelligence from the Kundalini. And so it will choose what level of, of electrical device it may terminate for you, <laughs> give you an opportunity to get something different, uh, and it will also choose what not to terminate. So there you have it. I'd like to thank Ed and Josephine specifically for their grace and for their gifts of grace for those who are having Kundalini and the issues of Kundalini that I may be able to help them with. So thank you both. And I'd like to... Well, hang on. I'm not finished saying thank you there, Amelia. There's two people that are very, very important uh, to to the Kundalini Awakening Systems. Uh, They have supported the Kundalini for, for many, many years. They have supported the Kundalini. They have, their home has supported the Kundalini and they themselves are indeed the supporters and the sole support of this radio program that you are listening to right now. And that is John and Amelia O'Connor. And I would like to say a very, very special and sacred thank you and and uh, a very strong level of gratitude on behalf of myself, the Kundalini, and those who are helped by being able to listen to this show in the archives. So, so thank you, John and Amelia O'Connor. You're Next question. <laughs> Next question. I'm new to Kundalini. I'm practicing my sadities. And the last two days, I feel like my body is vibrating and tired. My tongue is going up on its own, but I'm feeling anxiety. What do I need to do to relax it? First thing you need to do is stop drinking any caffeine. Don't use caffeine to make you feel the the degree of energy that you're used to having. Do not use caffeine or high fructose corn syrups or any kind of an artificial sweetener, number one. Number two, stay very, very, very hydrated. Allow the hydration. Allow yourself to go to the bathroom a lot. Uh, Carry water around with you. Good, clean water. Don't let any flavorings or F, D, and C, yellow number five or red number 30, whatever. Don't. Just let it be pure, pure, you know, pure spring water. Does not have to be RO water or reverse osmosis water. It's better to have a little bit of mineral content in the water so that you you keep your electrolytes uh, in a healthy state. So do that as well. Um, Surrender to this process. What's what's causing you anxiety, even without the caffeine and the high fructose corn syrups, is the the uh, uh, hyper-stimulation of your adrenal glands sitting on top of your kidneys. That's going to form levels of anxiety that, if you don't know the cause, can can become a a self nourishing feedback loop. The more you feel anxiety and you don't know why it is, the more you don't know and therefore the more anxiety and therefore the you know it becomes an endless uh, Mobius strip of anxiety and you don't need that because now you know that this is a temporary scenario that will come from the Kundalini upon the individual as the adrenals are being stimulated by the Kundalini and engaged by the kundalini and don't be surprised if your kidneys uh, enlarge uh, about a third more than they currently are you'll be able to feel them kind of sticking out over your belt line if you wear a tight belt like julia does okay so <laughs> he's smiling in a wane sort of way at that joke is like wanely smiling um but you'll you'll feel them those kidneys extend over your belt line. You can actually palpate them with your hands. So don't be afraid of that. And don't be afraid of this anxiety. It will be released. If you can get watermelon, organic watermelon, or even just conventional watermelon if you have to, or coconut milk, coconut water, coconut milk, um, you know, these can also give you the the hydration and the the nutrient-based a response that will greatly, uh, you know, take these these symptoms and, you know, bring them down a notch or two and yet not hurt the kundalini infusion that's occurring. So, yeah, yeah, that, that's that's a very good, that's a very good thing. Let that, t- that tongue come up. Surrender, 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 surrender 
to the kundalini that is manifesting within you. Yes, Santana. Next, next question. <laughs> I need a cue. <laughs> next question. I had a question about um, karma. Is it karmic balancing between my soul and the individual that hurt me, as I've hurt them before in this life? Or did they give that experience for only my karma? No, no, no. I mean, it's, it's going to karmic balance each person in a unique way. So, yes, in a way, yes, yes. It is It is for that frequency of your karma only, but it's also for the, the frequency of the other person's karma only. So, typically, karma takes two. You know, when it's with another individual or about another individual, you're going to have shared karma rather than than uh, than singled out karma. Now, if the other person really hasn't done anything wrong, or you know, at least in this life, then uh, there can be another life's worth of karma, or there can be a level of tolerance that is being taught to the individual. Okay, mm-hmm. but really, uh, worry about yourself more before before you worry about other people. You yourself need to learn these lessons, these karma constructions. No longer go out of your way to hurt that person, no matter what they do to you. There you go, Amelia. Okay. Q. Yeah, the pause, and I'll I, I get it next time. <laughs> okay, okay, next question. I have been extremely tired and exhausted since I felt Kundalini has broken through more into my heart chakra and upper chakras, almost to the point of wanting to sleep all the time. Is this normal? Yes, it is normal. Sometimes, I mean, if you look at Kundalini phenomena as a sine wave, you have your ups, you have your downs. Uh, you know, some of the ups with regards to to, uh, to activity-based scenarios, you'll be so active that you know you'll be able to 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 walk the dog, slice the bread, wash the car, play tennis, and jump out of an airplane all at the same time. And at the other end of the spectrum, you know you'll want to sleep all day. It's normal. Let yourself have the sleep. You need the sleep at the time. Now, of course. If you have a job or if you have something else that you have to do in order to survive in this world, talk with the kundalini individually, you to the kundalini, not through a medium, not through a psychic, not through a ghost hunter, not through anybody, but you to your kundalini and ask the kundalini to to bring a level of energy that allows you to keep your job and to keep your life, at least the life that is supporting the kundalini activation intact Q um, how does one know when has been given a Shakti pot how does one know when they've been given a Shakti pot well if they've gone to a guru who's giving Shakti pot well that's probably a pretty good indication if they do the Shakti pot with me then then uh, that there are very definitive times and dates and practices that a person does uh, in advance of that shakti pot, um, if uh, you're you're if you're with another person that's kundalini active, and all of a sudden you start getting kundalini phenomena, well, then you may want to consider yourself shakti pot. Uh, it, it, a lot of it's based on the intent of the person, the intent of of another person that has the kundalini, and the reception of any or all phenomena that it's associated with the kundalini. Q. I haven't had any phenomena for over a year now. Nothing as intense, mystical, or amazing as when I had, as when it first started. Will the phenomena return at some point? What is the person doing to nourish that phenomena? What is the person doing to surrender to the kundalini? Are they addicted to phenomena? Are they interpreting their kundalini awakening equation based solely on the presence or lack of, of presence of phenomena? You know, this you, you can't attach to the phenomena the way you would to a to a you know a walking stick or a car or a bicycle. You, if you attach, if you overly attach to that phenomena, well, that phenomena is going to leave. You need to nourish your kundalini, even if you don't have phenomena. And this this too is this is another test that the kundalini will give an awakening individual in order to allow them 
to, to learn what it is not to be addicted to a phenomena or a series of events or anything that has to do with the supernatural qualities that Kundalini can bring. If you're in it just for the power, well, you're not going to get it. If you're in it just for the phenomena, well, that's going to stop. Now, I hesitate to be so absolutist in these statements, and so I'm, I am going to cover myself with saying there are always exceptions to the rule. Karma has a lot to play with that. But typically, typically, this is how it's going to be. The more you try to attach something, the less Kundalini is going to give you something to attach to. The Kundalini is really about freedom from attachment. And that includes freedom from wanting to have that edge over another person or wanting to have that that pleasure, you know, derived from from sex or any other kind of activity that a person is deriving pleasure from, whether it be uh, a kundalini-based phenomena or any other kind of phenomena. It's not about providing uh, people something to attach to. And by taking that away, it's teaching you about what it is to be detached from that phenomenon. I am having an emotional crisis of some sort. I'm releasing through crying every morning. Are these new emotional releases normal? Is a Kundalini opening the heart chakra? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Q. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, I it's, think. That's true. I can't. <laughs> Maybe you can explain to him a little more. Centaur, <laughs> um, oh my goodness. Um, yes, it is normal. That's all I can say. <laughs> Wait a minute. Julia, respond to this questioner, would you? I don't know what to add. Go ahead. Read the question again. I've been having emotional crisis of some sort and having crying spells in the morning. Um, are these um, new emotional releases normal? Is the Kundalini opening the heart chakra? More. Sounds normal to me. Sounds normal to me, she says. So, yeah, yeah, that, that's pretty much a, uh, it's a short and sweet answer to a short and sweet question. Q. Okay. Um. I think that's it, Prism. That's well, a lot of questions. That no, was that was wonderful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for collecting them. Really, thank you. Now, let, I want to let people know that if if you that with Kundalini, information is power, and and if you would like to have more power at your fingertips, go to the YouTube channel and type in Chrisum dot Kundalini, and about three hundred videos will show up for you to peruse. Watch those videos. Watch them more than once. Uh, you can go to the Yahoo Network and at uh, Yahoo Groups, you have Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at yahoogroups.com. You also have Kundalini Healing at Yahoo Groups. You can go to the Facebook Network and you have Kundalini Awakening Systems 3, Kundalini Awakening Systems 2, Kundalini Awakening Exclamation Point, Kundalini Healing, uh, these are all on the Facebook network, and I want to, to invite you all to go there. Um, uh, we're also on Google+, Plus, which is always interesting because it's really hard to figure out how to use. But we're there, and we've got about, about 100 members in the Kundalini Awakening exclamation point group there. Um, there's some blog spots, as, uh, as uh, Amelia mentioned at the beginning. And at that one blog spot that Amelia mentioned, which is what again, Amelia? It is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And we have Fashji on the line, Chrism. His Holiness. Where is he? His Holiness. Here he is. Without checking, I think it's Fashji. Fashji? That's, that's Rosemary. Hi, Rosemary. Hello. Oh, is that? That's Rosemary, my dear. Okay, is this Fashji? Yeah, this Hello? is Fashji. 
<laughs> hi. Sorry, Rosemary. <laughs> and hi, hi Pat, I'm here as well. Hello. <laughs> Press the wrong button there. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome, Fast G. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I uh, have jo- enjoyed. Uh, you know, I have my speakers turned down, uh, so I can't hear if Rosemary is actually talking right now. No, she's not fast. She's okay, okay, wonderful. I'm, it's, it's my entity again. Um, <laughs> I wanted to come call in uh, right at the tail end because I saw that we were running out of time. Uh, we got about ten minutes, and um, I wanted to just uh, make. Uh, one note here that uh, a lot of the echoes that we hear is created by feedback, and it's important that when you call in to speak with uh, Chrism or Santara uh, that you turn the speakers down on your computer. Now, with that being said, Master, I'll, I'll get to what I called in. I, I have been sitting here and I've been listening. Um, are you there? Yes, yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. I, I I was listening to everything, and I I specifically enjoyed um, Julia's account of the entity involvement. And something inside me said, okay, you need to say something. And I say, say what? And this is what came through, and, and, and it's important that uh, because we're not having, uh, some of us may not be having entity involvement, it doesn't mean that we have not had it in our process over lifetimes. Uh, some of us may not be having as direct uh, an interface with entities uh, as Julia is having currently. However, it does not mean that we should invalidate our process. I think that it's important that we realize that we are all different karmically and that these things are going to happen differently for each and every one of us. And the important thing is two things, surrender to the kundalini and surrender to the flesh teacher. And I think that as long as we keep that in mind, I, I, I know that we will be successful in what we do. But I, I kept hearing in my head that, you know, there are these people that are saying, you know, I have no idea what we're talking about here as far as entity involvement. And I wanted them to, I wanted to address them, especially in the, the archives, that it is not absolutely necessary that you have this experience right now. Now, Master, I'm going to ask you, um, is what I'm saying making sense? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely correct. I mean, this is certainly a phase that people go through with the entities. They fade away pretty much sometimes for folks. And, yeah, you know, you don't need – I don't want you to compete on, a, you know, uh, your activation with Julia's activation or with Amelia's or with anybody else's really – uh, as Fashji mentioned, we are unique in, in how we come into the Kundalini. We are unique in the phenomena that we receive. It's just this particular show, this particular show uh, has a, a an entity nuanced aspect to it. Uh, but if you don't have to have entities right now in order to validate a Kundalini awakening event. Absolutely not. You don't have to have any phenomena to validate kundalini awakening. Uh, it helps. So phenomena is, a, is like a welcome signpost, but, you know, <laughs> your dreams can indicate a kundalini awakening event. Your your uh, your awareness, your, just your thoughts, how your thoughts are doing. Typically, there is some phenomena associated with it, but it doesn't have to be like anybody else's. It doesn't have to be like mine or fast or... Julia's or Amelia's, it doesn't have to be that way. And, and don't don't think that because you're not matching up your phenomena with with any of the guests or, or with me or with some of the some of the other more shall we say challenging phenomena that you're not having Kundalini. You may indeed be having Kundalini just without that challenge. Thank you. Thank well, you very thank much, you. Master. I want to. 
Yeah, I told you I would I would come on, and I I was trying to look for an opening, but um, yeah. oh my, I, all my my muscles were tense. It's just oh my god, that she's on. <laughs> Listen, um, I wanted to mention that I, I do indeed um, have some entity involvement. I would just like for you to tell me whether it's you, an entity, or the Kundalini that hits the gong at. What happened there? Well, um, I would have to say, without without hearing the rest of the uh, the question, I would have to say that uh, it's probably the Kundalini that is doing that. Same work. because I turn my speaker down. Oh, say it, you, say it again. Say it again. What's the question? Oh, I I, I was um, I was trying my bit at humor. Um, I was going to say that indeed I do have entity involvement. Uh, but um, it is of a particular kind, and I was going to ask if it you if you thought it might be you, uh, Shakti, or uh, actually an entity that rings a gong during the golden hour for me to get up. That would be the Kundalini, <laughs> sure. <laughs> without a doubt, without a doubt, and I'm really happy. I'm really happy. Sometimes with that. I get a hey you. <laughs> <laughs> That's great phenomena. That is really that's actually, that's actually Okay. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to just um ask that question regarding um Well thank you for coming on at all. It's good to hear your voice. Thank you, Master. Thank you. And it's great to hear all of you, um, especially uh Miss Santara who is making all of this possible. I see you, John, and and thank you very much. And I'm going to get out of the way, and I'm going to head off into the Shiva Blue. (laughs) Shiva Blue. Goodbye, Pastor. Bye, Bye. (laughs) Pastor. Well, everybody, I would like to say thank you for listening. For those of you that have lasted this whole time, I'd like to say thank you to Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez Pasci, guest 1764, and BAXTK048. Thank you for lasting so long. Thank you, Julie Celestial Rubies, for being here. Thank you, Julia, Her Holiness, for being here. Thank you, everyone, for coming to this. And thank you, John and Amelia, for putting this show on. Good night. And thank you, Cruz. Good night, everyone. <laughs>